Rahubat. Could you please, say please, your please. name, where you're calling from, and then ask your question, please? Uh, my name is Arlandis. I'm calling from Georgia in the Rahubat. United States. Rahubat. And How you doing? I'm doing all right. I came across you guys a couple of weeks ago. Um, I just had a question about um, where family members go after they pass away. Right. And, do I only have one question? No, but um, I wanted, I, I mean, how many do you have? Uh, just a few, maybe three. Okay. Do you want me to address them one at a time? Or do you want to actually ask all three and then I'll address them all together. That way, if somebody calls in, um, it won't interrupt. So go ahead. Okay. So I wanted to know where where family members pass away when they when they when they pass on. Mm -hmm. Um, what like is Christianity a falsehood and all of the religions? Mm -hmm. And also, um, what could I do now to to recant or or or, or um, you know redirect myself to a to a better path? Okay, got you. Right, so um, the first one, again, um, like you said, I'm going to give you some books, and these scrolls are available from the website. I'm trying to find them as we're talking. Um, there's a scroll called The Spiritual You After the Physical You Dies. Yeah, that's one that covers that subject in great detail. There's another one called The 24 Elders um, that, also, that also covers that. And when you say, where do we go?, a lot of times, because we're loving and caring people, we tend to always use the we and include everyone. However, everybody has the opportunity to determine where they're going to go. Um, because the whole point of you coming here or being here is to learn and to basically master the lower vibrations or the lower realms which we refer to as the physical realm or the material plane. And so if you don't master these ones, then it's hard for you to progress to the next levels up. So there are nine different, nine different realms. And um, when we say nine, it's only because nine is the highest number. So we're really talking about nine to the ninth power of nine. So once you get to that nine, it's, it's um, variations of dimensions all right so depending on how you've lived your life how you've turned yourself inside out which is what the master teacher part the babylonian is um, constantly reminding us of doing and to clean ourselves inside out because you have to remember that your physical as well as having other components your spiritual being your plasmatic being, your mental being, and ultimately the highest one is the etheric being. When we say etheric, we're dealing with the ethers, and ethers are on different levels as well, or vibration. So the, the lower or the slower the movement is the lower the vibration. The faster the movement in terms of the oscillation of you know frequency, the higher you get. So beings that are very spiritual will vibrate faster on higher realms. So um, that's such a big question, but where you go is, is, is based on how you lived your life here. A lot of the things that are real in Wusabat, religions have picked up because religions were trying to communicate these things, but they didn't have the full facts, so it's on a lesser level. So you would hear that most religious people will talk about dying but the thing is they would then say if it's based on the monotheistic religions they will say you're either going to go to the lower realms called hell or you're going to go to a place called heaven which is the higher realms um, so they every time somebody says heaven people look up but the thing is that when you're talking about vibrations you can vibrate higher or lower so um yeah so you have 24 to 24,000 cycles that you have as a, a chance to perfect yourself. This is why even in Islam they say those who are working to perfect themselves. All right, so if you didn't make it the first time, you know, you have up to 24,000 times. As taught to us by our master teacher, Parnabab Yanun, and he says that most people 
have on, on average been here 9,000 times. And so if you weren't around when, we'll, if, you, if you came back around this time and Wool Sabat is here, then you have the opportunity to quickly um, clean yourself up by practicing the ways of Wool Sabat, by studying the doctrine and learning how to turn yourself inside out. Um, so yeah, so depending on what, what, you, you know, what you've attained in your life will determine where you, where you go. Ultimately, you want to go back to what we call part, right? Um, so in English, we will say the all, and then you have the all expanding, and part will be like all is. Um, when we try to explain things in English, remember that the English um, dialect is a low vibration, and not every word can be translated from what they call Semitic languages or Shemitic languages into English. So when we speak our own language, Misbatia, Sabaic, Nuwapic, this raises your vibration, it recalibrates your being because everything is a tone. Tones are vibrations, tones are frequencies, and they're ultimately everything is energy at different densities. Yeah, so um, that was the first part. The second part was, um, what was the second part? Uh, it's Christianity. Yes, it's Christianity false, yes. So not just Christianity, but religion. Um, religion is, originally it was, it was really to guide certain people by way of discipline and so on, but then it got turned around. So where it was supposed to guide a particular people, um, they turned around and used it to control the masses. And you're saying relying on the jinns, or you're giving your allegiance, or you're, you know, worshiping these legions of of um, familiar spirit or ancestors of other people. And so, yes, Christianity. If you don't know any better, then and and Islam, most of the the good things that they teach, which has nothing to do with controlling people, but things like love thy neighbor as you love thyself, do unto others as you would like them to do unto you. All those types of teachings, um, you know, um, desire is, you know, the, it leads to sufferation. All of these things would be the same throughout all religions. But the thing is that um, traditions of men and men that wanted to control the world, they started to basically add things into it. So. Um, religion was trying to convey a good message, but if you took out all the good bits out of all the religions and put it into a basket, that would be a part of Wu Sabat. But yes, today what you're practicing is really worshipping demons, antichrists and extraterrestrials that are passing themselves off as being good, but they're not because they have ulterior motives or, you know, they're basically not, not good beings. Do you remember the last question? Yeah, this is why I'm probably going to do one question at a time because by the time I give a long answer on one, I don't remember the others. All right, so we have another caller. I will address the last question that I missed if, if I get reminded of it. Rahubat, um, caller, please go ahead. Say your name, where you're calling from, and your question. Rahubat, Dre, London. So the question, uh, was following up from the, the previous question you had with the what happens with the family member when they pass, yeah. is you mentioned that... Uh, depending on what they do on this earth is depending on whether they elevate and some people have been in 9,000 times, etc. Yeah. Is if they don't elevate, if they wasn't aware of what's about, which a lot, I'm assuming a lot of family members are. Yeah. If they don't elevate, are you then saying we are unable to communicate with them and they're therefore continuing their journey and retrying again? And then also, just to add on that, could yes. you then elaborate or explain what that would look like in English human terms as in what does that look like if we're unable to speak to them are they in a whole different realm do they remember us remember themselves etc okay yeah it's not that um when when I said they they come back um and that's pretty much everyone who doesn't make it comes back as a as another chance but um you are always connected to them anyway because you're, they're your family. So you're connected to them by way of your DNA. So 
you are them and they are you, um, regardless of what realm they are on, and you can tune in and communicate with them. So it's not a matter of you're cut off from them, um, but sometimes the realm that they may be in, they may be trapped or being utilised by these other forces that are on those, on those realms. And it's your job to try and help them out. That's why you elevating yourself um, means that you can help them. All right? Um, yeah, I just saw that come in. Are you Moses? Yeah, I appreciate and love your donation. Um, yeah, so I'm going to quickly answer that. But I think, was there part, another part to that last question as well? So I'm very, very tired today, but we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna charge up. The master talks about the 24 elders. Is the elder named Kadisin the same person the Hindus call Babaji? Um, no, um, as far as I know, he's the elder. Let me find him. He's the elder referred to as, um, what's his other name? Um, I'm going to find it. He's the elder referred to as... Uh, what's his name? His name's just escaped me, but I'll find him. He's the elder referred to as... I'm sure somebody's uh, going saying it. Let me look in the chat. But um, he has another name. In the Holy... Ta oh, wait, was that? In the Holy Tablets, you do... Uh, here we go, let's see. Um, yeah, this this is um, Cadison there, right? Um if you can see that clearly. All right, so, um, right, I'm just going to go through them just to make sure. In fact, let me do that so you can see the different elders. In fact, we've got a video um, coming out soon where it talks about these 24 elders. Um, Uh, to, to not make up anything, um, I don't know if that's who they're called, Babaji. No, I'm not sure. Unless one of the other um, student teachers can put something in the chat. But, yeah, I'm not sure, to be honest. I'll have to come back to you on that one. All right. Um, yeah, I think um, I didn't finish off some of those questions, if I can get prompted again. Oh, gosh, the calls are coming in fast and furious. Go ahead, caller. What's your name? Where you called from? How you doing, sir? Uh, this is Leon calling you from Texas. Hey, Raul Bat. Greetings. Raul Bat. How you doing, sir? I thank you for taking my call. I've been watching you for a couple of months now, and um, I saw one of your earlier episodes uh, with you and the other brother that was speaking. Talk. And I noticed that you spoke about the red and blue blood. Yes. Now, I also watched a later episode of The Master Teacher, I believe, that was, you know, actually, I'm actually enrolled in your online class. Okay. And one of the classes uh, episodes spoke about there's a town in between Spain and France mm -hmm. that 45 percent of its population is made up of Rh negative blood. Yes. If you could, could you uh, en enlighten me on what did you mean by the red and blood, red and blue blood? Uh, okay. Thank you for taking my call. Absolutely. Yes. Right. So um, when you look at the people that are ruling the world on the planet. It's by blood. Everybody, you know, emphasizes about blood because of the bloodlines. And so um, you can even Google the, the, all the presidents of America, for example, they're all related in some way, shape or form. Because going back to our ancient times, it was about preserving the bloodlines. And this is why even in the biblical stories, they tell you in the book of Numbers, for example, that this person begot this person and this person begot this person and it's because they were keeping um, a, a, a tree, a family tree, and tracing the bloodlines. This is why we can actually tell you, because it's in the Bible, for example, the bloodline from Adam all the way to the book of Revelations in the New Testament. And, and so we know who these beings and extraterrestrials are. So when you look at the, as I also mentioned recently, that the political parties, they all tend to wear red, red ties and blue ties or, you know, red, red and blue. You look at the American flag, is red and blue. You look at the British flag, it's also got the red and blue. 
And this ties into the blood because when you're looking at the Europeans, they were hemophiliacs because they were unable to clot. They, 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 they lacked the homoglobin. They didn't have the salt in their blood to clot. And it goes to something called the War of the Roses. If you research and Google the War of the Roses, where you had two families, the Lancasters and um, the Doncasters, I think. Basically, when you look at our history, it's always been about our blood. And this is a deep question because when I say it's always been about our blood, when you look at slavery, a lot of that was because of our blood because the Nubian or the, the Nagaru's blood is the blood that everybody wants or to mix in with because it's the nine ether blood and all the genealogies on the planet come from the original DNA of the Africans on the planet. This has been proven by you know, archaeologists, anthropologists, all historians. So it's not even about, it's not a racism thing, but what it ties into is that when you look at that story that then relates to Dracula, because when you know about Dracula, Dracula is the being that he lives by sucking blood or he feeds off of the blood. And so what Dracula does is he will, he can't come out during the day because the sun will attack him. And that is symbolic of when the, if you read the, the books in the Bible of the book of Leviticus, it talks about the curse of Canaan, right? Who was the son of Ham. And because he had something called Liproma, um, he was, you know, he was melanin deficient. And he had, you know, he was something called an albino, or we say here albino. And so he couldn't live under the sun and had to move into cooler climates where it was more conducive for his lack of melanin. And, and so what Dracula does, he can't come out during the day, he has to come out at night or during the shadow hours, and then he has to pray and find a victim to bite and suck their blood. When you look at the word Dracula, it ties into the, Dra the Draco or Draconians from the Draco star constellation, which is dealing with these beings that are, you know, they love blood, they meat eat, they human, they like human flesh. And so when you look at the RH negative, um, you know, that ties into those bloodlines because that is an extraterrestrial uh, blood type, the RH negative. If you study blood types, you will find that um, the original Africans were originally, they were only positive blood types. The negative or the H factor came in because of these beings mixing with, um, with animals. And so there's a, it's a big story, but you've asked a very, very important question. So this is what we're talking about. Look, research the, the things I've said about, um, about Dracula, about the slave trade. This also ties into Abraham Lincoln and about the, you know, the freedom of the slaves and so on and so forth. But research the War of Roses, research Dracula, um, and how it ties into the draconian and these beings that to this day are about blood and flesh and it goes into Satanists and it goes into a lot of rituals and a lot of practices that have weaved their way into religion. So now in the Bible, in the Quran and in these books, you start to see like they're sprinkling blood over the altar, they're doing blood sacrifices and they're offering sacrifices of even being tested to try and um, get killed or sacrifice your son and you know in the, in the sense of Isaac and those types of things. So there's a lot to it. Um, we have a lot of books that do go into it. There's a there's one called Bloodthirst. I think I just um, I just had it. Bloodthirst and let me get you give you the proper title. I know today we're going to have a lot of questions. I can just feel it. Okay. I literally just had it, but um, that ties into the, to these beings called um, Anunnaki, which a lot of people seem to be on, part Anunnaki and the biblical Quranic race. That will give you information about what we were just speaking about, but there's a particular scroll that I'm going to find. When I grab it, um, I literally just had it. Um, Yeah, I just sometimes just grab a few scrolls. Um, so 
I don't really know what questions are going to come up, but I will find it before the end so I can take some more questions. But I do hope that's helped you um, in some way, right? Okay. Okay, so we've got Melaninated Nomad. I oh, appreciate love your donation. Thanks for the support. Every little helps. Understanding that the creation and use of the term race, how do those who live a life of Wu Sabat deal with racism? It's so triggering in America that at times it becomes as a huge challenge. Yeah, um, that's actually really interesting. When, when you look at the word race, um, you can look at it like in running a race, or as we're saying when we're dealing with genetics. And the thing about um, the race thing is that it, if there was only one race on the planet, as there was originally, um, then how can black people be racist? Because there is only one race, and that's the race that it comes from. So, um, yeah, it's triggering because people don't want to talk about, they don't want to talk about that subject. It's funny because sometimes we read the comments and we hear people say that the master teachers, when they read some of his material, that he's racist. And we're like, when we talk about racism, we can literally go through from the beginning of time to now and look at who or what race is causing the most amount of hatred, killing, murders, etc., etc., on the whole planet. So, um, yeah, in terms of race, we, we don't deal with racism. This is why if you go on our website, unitedsabiansworldwide.com, on, and on, on pretty much all our literature, you will always hear us say, no one wins the race in racism. And race is used, and it was only created by people that wanted to separate and divide people. And um, when we say no one wins the race in racism, it's because that's what it's really about. It's about having people fight against each other. So in Wu Sabat, we don't deal with racism. We deal with truth and actual facts. But sometimes the truth can be very bitter um, and you know people want to hide and kind of like push under the carpet some of the things that they do or have done but in reality you have to face up to it because when we start to look at like the holocaust or other things that have happened to other people it's well known and well spoken about and even reparations are given but the minute you know we talk about the things the atrocities and things that we've gone through which is worse than anybody on the planet nobody wants us to, to address it or deal with it because by accepting and acknowledging it it means okay the next question may be reparations and reparations is not always about a monetary thing it's it's about actually acknowledging and saying you're sorry and um, trying to make amends trying to be fair but because Race isn't really a competition. Like I said, if you're running a race, it's like you have a number of people lined up and they're running a race and it's competition to see who's the fastest. But um, if I would I read something to you, it's like, what is race, right? And this is very, very important. I'm going to read this quickly. Um, so in our language, that's Salao, race, yeah? And... Um, and the word sabak is the sabaic word for right, a, competition, a competition. So this is what I want to read to you. It says, tribal names are not a race. Location is not a race. Religious titles are not a race. And a nation is not a race. Yeah? Love and attraction does not know race because they're not physical. They are actions. All right? When you say that the Arab is not a race, the word is from Chaldea Hebrew, meaning to mix or mingle. A people made up of many mixtures, not a single race. And Jewish is not a race or a tribe. It's a religion, not a single race of people. Judaism is 
a religion not to be mistaken for the tribe of Judah, which is the tribe of Yehuda in Hebrew. So Jew or Jewish is not a race, it's a religion. American is not race. European is not a race. Indian is not a race. Moorish is not a race. Spanish is not a race. Puerto Rican is not a race. Panamanian is not a race. The same for Trinidad, Jamaican, Italian. These are not races. Canadian is not a race. Portuguese is not a race. Dutch is not a race. World over, places where people are born or religious opinions, they have accepted it's not a race. All right? And, you know, I could go on, but what people do is they mix up what the word race means. And when we look at what the so-called scholars say about it, they deal with an anthropologist who will try to figure out, well, who came first based on findings, bones, and doing DNA, um, you know, experiments and testing and things like that. And now um, they've classified races into three root races. And then the mixture between any of those is known as a sub-race. And then you have hybrids that are also um, combinations of different amounts of DNA from different people. And this is referred to as a neutrinoid race. Um, so, yeah, I hope that's answered the question. But in terms of Wusabat, we don't deal with racism. We deal with facts. And people just have to be able to deal with the truth and not look at it as this is anything to do with race. It's to do with humanity and it's to do with us changing the world to be a much better place. Right, I've got another one. Yeah, this one here, right? Forgive me if I can't pronounce your names properly. Architect, architecta, verbal. Again, appreciate love your donation. Um, I've noticed there's a great awakening happening now for Hispanics. Is there scrolls in Spanish? There are a lot of misinformation in Spanish given to us. Man, it, like, this is what we're saying, like, there's an awakening worldwide because when you're dealing with the power of love, not love in the sense of how it's been desecrated, but genuine care, right? Not based on people, places and things, but genuine love and care for everyone and everything, it will resonate because there are people in the entire world now that want to know the truth, that want to live peacefully and happily in utopia. And so this is a worldwide thing. That kind of ties into what I was saying about Wu Sabat. It's not, a ra it's not racist, but because, you know, the master teacher happens to be in the skin suit and colour that he's in, and he's been sent to us because every other race has been sent their warner and guide. It just so happens that most of them refused and didn't acknowledge their guide and even went as far as, you know, um, what's the word you young people use these days when, uh, I don't want to say the word, they took them out, if you know what I'm saying, right? So this time it's our turn. The first shall be the last and the last shall be the first. And he has been sent to us as the Negroid race. However, just like every other master teacher that is here for humanity, anyone else can join. But we say charity begins at home. This is why when we talk about Wu Sabat and we talk about our greatness, about you know who we are, we were here first and so on, people say, so, oh, we're racist. We're not. Um, it's the actual facts. Truth is truth. Check the evidence. Yes, yeah, so in terms of the Spanish thing, what I'm saying is we need help. We need people to be able to translate in every language. The master teacher started translating a lot of books into different languages, but we need, there's a lot of work to be done. You know, we want classes everywhere. We need teachers everywhere. We need temples everywhere. We need to have stalls everywhere. We need to be able to translate all the books into, I, I, I noticed into other languages. I noticed some people on um, social media are translating some of my videos into French, into other languages, and that's good. Obviously, um, you know, we want to make sure you're not changing what we're saying, but yes, we do want to have the information, affirmation in every language to touch every corner of the planet. And it is happening, but there's more work to be done in a very short period of time. That's why we say subscribe to OSM Vision so you can stay up to date with everything that's happening, all right? Um, 
Let me move on to, okay, new ones. Oh, at the bottom. <laughs> All right, let me have another look. Oh, you guys are really showing love today and we really appreciate, love it. Um, you know, we want to do this. Imagine you had a 24 hours a day channel. You just turn on that channel and it's just wolves about all day long, different teachers, different, you know, that's what we want to do. So you're helping us to do this full time. Much, much, much appreciated, appreciate loved. To my understanding, the Pleiadians created the Adamites as a food source for the Draconians, right? Correct. So what race did Yakub create? Yakub created the Flugerods. I'm telling you, we literally just did a video on this. It's coming out. Look out for that. And if you're a subscriber, if you're a member, you get to see the videos first. We literally got a video coming on Yakub that right? I did recently to explain this because it keeps coming up as a question. So what he did, um, the story of, of Jacob, he created what was known as the Flugerods, who were 8,400 years ago. That's 2,400 years before the person that I mentioned before called Canaan or Canaan, the son of um, you know, Ham, where, from Noah, where you read in the, in the biblical story. But that's where people get confused because those Flugerods, they were in the mountains, and then you had beans from Sirius, the shaggy beans, which people refer to as, um, as Bigfoot. Um, I'm going to organize my books a bit better so I can just pick up and show you guys. But the, the Bigfoot, those, those, when you look at those shaggy beans, they're like, um, they're like a black one. I'm going to find it. I'm literally going to find that for you. They're black. Um, there's like a red, reddish one, and there's like a, a, a blonde one. Right, bear with me, bear with me. It's live, this is live TV or live shows, not even TV, live YouTube. Um, I literally had it. Oh, no, that's not it. Ah, oh, what's going on today? Okay, I want to find that and show the picture. But anyway, let me carry on whilst I'm looking for it. Um, so he created his flu garage and it was a process. It took about, it took him like 600 years. But the thing is, he didn't actually live to see his, um, his final creation. But he had such a loyal following by his scientists that they, were, they already knew the blueprint of what to do and they carried on and completed the, um, the project whilst they were traveling around the coast of Africa. And so what he did is he took, he took the black... I'm, I'm, actually, the video is coming out, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but um, he basically, what he did was he had the black gene and when they had children, he, he, he basically killed the... Uh, I'm saying the word... Um, he got rid of them and then kept only the light ones and then he kind of went from a process of going from black to brown um, to red and then eventually to create the, the flugorods who were pale, all right? And then um, those flugorods eventually mixed with those Canaanites that came from way of, of Ham and the, the curse of Canaan. So, and then you had these shaggy beans that also came and mixed with them. So there's a lot of mixing. I hope that's answered the question. Um, let me go to the next one. Yeah, so to answer your question, you literally asked who was the race that Jakub created, and those would be the Flugerods. Um, then we have C. Duba. Yeah. Again, much appreciated. Much appreciate, love your donation. Um, what do you know of the Anunnaki? Yeah. Um, this question comes up with, I mean, we've got a lot of information on this already and look out for the video coming up. But the Anunnaki are the, remember, I just literally mentioned that scroll, yeah? Look at that scroll. It's called the Pa Anunnaki. Pa is the Anunnaki and the biblical and Quranic race. This, these are the people that in the Bible are being spoken about right from the beginning of Genesis, which is really the recreation or reconstruction after a flood that took place. Not the Noah's flood, the Noah's flood comes later. So this is Anu and his family that came here 
and they came in groups of 50 because the craft they came on could only hold 50 passengers. So when you're saying Anunnaki, you're saying the beings that Anu sent to the planet Ki, because this planet was called Ki at the time, in groups of 50, and they came here um, whilst the, the planet was flooded and they were terraforming the planet and, you know, goes, that's who you're talking about in the Bible, Enki and Enlil, who are referred to like Baal and Yahweh and all those names you're reading in the Bible is their family, all right? All right, let's move on. You've got a call and then another donation. Okay, live caller. Go ahead, caller. What's your name? Where are you calling from? And appreciate your call. Go ahead and ask your question. How you doing, brother? This is uh, Leon again calling you back from Texas. Hey, Leon. I think I missed that part of your question, right? But go ahead. Okay. Um, I have two questions, uh, quick questions. The last time I was watching one of your episodes, I noticed that you and the other brother were speaking about not putting yourself on the menu. Now, right. we have stopped eating meat. We have stopped eating meat. We don't eat no processed foods. We're going all veggies, no animal products whatsoever. But the one, one of the questions I have is, everyone's talking about this return, and I know what's returning is not some fluffy dude coming out of the sky to save someone. It's, it's going to be the ones who came in the beginning. Now, how do you take yourself literally off the menu? How are you putting yourself on the menu to protect yourself from those who are looking for what they're coming back to devour? Mm. The second question is, do you have any Wusubak communities here in Texas that right. we can become a part of. I uh, thank you and I'll listen to your response. Thank you. Yes, um, the best thing to do is go on our website, unitedsabiansworldwide.com and look at contact and there is uh, bookstores and it gives you the different locations worldwide. And as usual, we keep saying, if there isn't one near you, you have to go to the closest one. And also we would be encouraging any Sabians or Nwapians in that area to start getting together and, um, you know, doing um, study classes and um, study groups and learn and study together and then build a community and then plug in with, um, you know, the central um, as a satellite. And, and that's how we grow and build. So, yeah, look on the website because I can't tell you off the top of my head if there is one in Texas, but there will be one close by. And if you're the seed in that area, you may be that person that needs to, you know, become that first person. It always starts with one person. One man can make, or, or woman can make a difference, you know. So you might be that seed that needs to start and grow. And yes, in terms of the other question, there's a movie called World War Z. If you haven't seen that, it's quite old now, but um, it's very interesting because you have to also, when, you, when, you're, when you're open... Um, be able to discern things, like when you look at an image. Things are not just done by coincidence. People that put movies together or images together or titles and names, it's a message to those who can discern it, right? So when you look at the World War Z, you see a red Z, which the Z ties into what I was saying about Zeta and dealing with, when you look at the Z, it looks like a, a S if you really look at it and ties into the the serpent, the snake people, and even if you look at the Superman's icon on his, um, you know, his suit, it's an S because it deals with these, these beings we're talking about. It's all not by coincidence. But the reason I mentioned the movie is because it's about how the zombie apocalypse, right, it deals with that, a time when it gets so out of hand that the beings that have this DNA, this genetic of eating flesh and and they, they thirst for blood. Um, and there's so many zombie movies now, you just look at them and they're telling you something, even though it's past of as entertainment. But um, you're right, to change your diet is changing your vibration and your frequency. And in the movie, they could smell you because when you look at your body, most people are familiar with the term, your body is a temple. And in your temple, you have an altar, right? And, and this is symbolic to how churches are also built because they say the temple is a church and there's an altar in the church or the mosque or whatever. And that's where they burnt offerings and sacrifices are made. So you're doing the same thing when you're putting flesh into your body because how it's broken down is that you chew it, it breaks down. Um, it's obviously harder to break down than vegetables and, you know, fruit, but... Um, 
the acid in the blood burns the meat. So you're really giving an offering into your altar and your body is porous. So when you're burning down these um, things that you're eating, it, it comes back out through your pores. This is why people of a certain diet, they will smell a certain way. And so by changing your diet, it's cleaning yourself inside out because you don't want to eat rotten things or dead flesh, which takes a long time to digest. Your body is not designed to consume meat. You didn't, we didn't have canine teeth before. But because our history in terms of how we evolved, we have reptilian in us. We have something called the reptilian brain. We have, um, you know, we, we, we need to drink water. We need to bathe in water or shower in water. You know, we're constantly like being around water. What we're breathing is water. It's just a, a thinner form of water. We're in an aquarium, right? So I'm saying that to say that we have a nature that is tied to the reptilian side. And then we have a nature that is tied to the real gods known as the Parnatharu, who are the ones that seeded this planet. And then everyone else's DNA and genes comes from that African gene. And that's separate from the Anunnaki. The Anunnaki came and eventually they also took that which was evolving naturally to create the, the beings that they refer to as Lulu and Milus or primitive workers to help them mine the gold because this is what they were originally looking for um, and then came here and found that it was here. So saying that to say that when you take yourself off the men, you, is by not giving off that, you're not seasoning yourself and giving off that scent of, you know, um, something that another being will like. This is in the jungle, certain animals can smell you because of what is what you're giving off and so you're Greetings. changing your vibration you kind of question? and you're vibrating on a on a higher level so wu sabat okay, helps you phone, to turn yourself inside out to, to know what to do what not next. to do and yeah so read all the scrolls by the master teacher that you can get hold of be around other sabians noirpians get into study groups go into a community and um yeah and then you can take yourself off the menu Uh, thank you. My mod is doing a great job. And Big up to King. <laughs> this one? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, once again, I want to give you a big thank you for the donation. In the Tablets of Thoth, he explains he's still in the halls of Amenti and explains how to get there physically and what to do spiritually as well. Um, is that a question? I don't. In the Tablets of Thoth, he explains... He's still in the halls of a mentee and explains how to get there physically and what to do spiritually. All right, let me answer the question. The thing is, when we're saying Thoth, we're saying Tahuti, right? And that is the being that is reincarnated now as Parnabab Yanun, Dr. Malachi Ziyo, because this Tahuti is the scribe that recorded and wrote most of the information on the planet, including, as you say, um, the emerald tablets. So throughout time, he comes and he reincarnates all the time and he basically teaches different cultures and they speak about him and use different names and terminology for him. But he's the one that is, um, is here now. And again, like we said, there are many, many titles for him. I also did a video already on this called um, Tauti is here now. So if you go on our OSM vision, find that video and it, it gives you a lot of information about the different names. You know, they call him um, Tahuti, Thoth, Hermes, um, many, many different titles, all right? Yeah, so, and those, the halls of Amenti and so on, that, those are those stories because in each um, culture, they talk about how you would travel in terms of your transition. And that goes into the Anunnaki stories of going into the underworld. And, um, and in the Egyptian stories, they talk about you, you know, you, you traveling through and going through something we call the manjet and um, your, your heart gets weighed, you know, by mat, the mat feathers and so on. So, but it's talking about this time period with the same being who is able to help you transcend from the physical world 
through the spiritual world to the other realms. All right? Okay, we've got another caller. All right, let's go for it. And then we'll have to look at some of the comments. Greetings, caller. Rao back. Greetings. My name is Tumaini Rafaeli. I'm from Africa, specifically Tanzania. Greetings, Rao back. Go ahead. Uh, I would like to ask you two questions. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one, I would like to know what happened to the uh, scenes because it seems like we cannot find their stories before before the Qumran, before the, the discovery of Qumran tablets. And the second question is, what happens when we are having a sleeping paralysis? Is our eyes really closed or open? Because I'm having it many times, and I don't know why, especially when I'm sleeping with my back. Right, excellent. All right, so I think the first question was relating to the lost... Um, yeah, there are many, 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 many books that were hidden or uh, were purposely hidden to be found during this time of the awakening. And the uh, awakening actually started, you know, happening um, in, in the 60s, 70s, 80s, because it was in, the elders were preparing for the arrival of Parnabab Yanun. And um, so he opened up the seven seals or broke the seven seals, which is when you study, you know, religion, they talk about you know, like the book of Daniel, where he was talking about the future and he was explaining his visions and he said that, lock away that book until the right time. And that time came in the 1970 when the master broke the seventh seal and he was allotted or given an hour and that was symbolically 30 minutes from the year 1970 to the year 2000, which is half an hour. And then from the year 2000, to 2030, which is the second half hour, which makes up the hour where a lot of truth was going to be revealed and all false things will start to perish. Nothing will be left unturned. The truth will be here. And so lots of tablets were being found and in places like Iraq, where modern day Iraq, which would have been ancient Sumer or the, you know that Babylonian area where Abraham and his father was from. So. A lot of things were found. The Qumran tablets, as you, you just referred to, many, many books and tablets and things have been found which were left out of the Bible. Because remember, the Bible was compiled by the Nicaea Council and you know people like King James who had an, the authority over them. So a lot of information was left out. Things that, you know, things that today um, are being discovered, you know, things like the Essenes who were you know, the spiritual aspect of the people that were following the practices that, um, you know, the person they call Jesus was following. And in every, in every religion, you have the spiritual aspect and then you have the, the kind of dogmas and man-made and the opinions of men that want to control people. So you will find that the Sufi order, for example, in, in Islam, people say, oh, don't deal with that because this is dealing with the real spiritual aspect. And Throughout the schools we went through, that the master teacher took us through, he was, you know, he took us through the ancient mystical order of Melchizedek. When you start to find out who Melchizedek is, it's Malachi Zadok, or Malachi Zadek, or Malachi, which is the last book of the Old Testament, where it's saying, my angel. And then you read the book of Revelations, which is the last book of the New Testament, it's telling you that he will be sending his angel Right, and when you start to research what that angel is, in the Greek is angelos, but it's talking about this angel that will come. Um, the word angel means messenger, right? So he came and he started to basically tell the truth about everything. This is why he was like, "Ask me anything," and he and he's been he's been saying that for over fifty years, and he's still teaching, even though he has already retired. You can see these are just some of the books, like of the thousand plus books that he has written. So um, what is the second question was, um, oh yeah, about the sleep paralysis, which people may know as astral projection or traveling, because like we are, we are saying and teaching is, you're not just this physical body. This physical body is just a skin suit that contains the real you, which can travel to different dimensions. And this is what happens when people are asleep. 
most people do travel during their sleep and they call it dreams. Um, but there are different types of dreams. There are dreams which are just, you know, just junk information from like the TV, the movies or incidences and things that have happened throughout your life that you've stored in your subconscious. And some of this needs to be purged out. And there are visions which are just for you, which are just messages that are being sent to you by your ancestors, other beings or whatever, to communicate something that, you know, is maybe for the benefit of more than yourself. And then you have, you know, messages that are just for you. And when you do travel, you go to these other dimensions. And this is what astral projection is, like your body's coming, your, your etheric or your spiritual or, you know, that being is coming out of your body and it's called sleep paralysis because you're paralyzed once the essence that um, powers this body, for lack of a better word, is not there, you can't move. So people that are not used to it, when it happens, sometimes it happens by accident and you're just like freezing and you can't move. You're aware, but you can't move because you are still connected to your etheric being through something called an etheric cord. It's like when you're born into the physical world, your mother has um, a connection to you by the um, umbilical cord. You have an etheric cord, which is really um, an energy cord. So it can stretch anywhere. Like it's literally, um, and you have cords tied to people that you're very close to, especially if you're involved um, romantically or something. And this is why again it's not very good to just like be frivolous with the partners or people that you exchange bodily fluids with because their spirits their ancestors their ether energy is going to be linked to yours and this is why sometimes in relationships for example when people break up it's very hard they get that what they call butterflies in their stomach it's that connection and the ancestors of the two sides uh, may be upset or angry that one is being hurt or whatever, you know. So, um, yeah, it's about learning to be disciplined enough by your diet, by meditation, by relaxation, by all the things you get taught in Wu Sabat. They will help you to develop your inner being and to, how, to learn how to be able to leave and come back into your body without getting trapped outside or other entities messing with you. Because sometimes you can open up yourself because it, when you're dealing with, um, you've got energy centers, all right? People refer to them as chakras and, and people say, oh, that's not what it is. But they're superimposed on what we call the glands, all right? So your pituitary gland, your pineal gland, your thyroid glands, these are all seats that can vibrate based on how healthy you are, based on your mental state. And so it's important to know that if you, if you don't know what you're doing, other entities can actually get hold and take control of you and you become a vagabond or wandering around. And, you know, you'd see people that mess around with things like Ouija boards and um, trying to, you know, do things of spiritual nature that they don't know much about and they're not sure of what they're doing. So it's important to learn and be taught by a spiritual master, okay? Someone who has mastered everything to do with the spiritual realm as well as the physical realm. And that's Pandav Abhyanun who's teaching us. And as student teachers, you know, we do our best to try and spread the word, all right? Now, we've got a, another kind donation from D. Thanks, D. Much appreciate love, your donation. Hi, whose planet was, the f was Whose planet was this first before the galactical immigration came and, confu and confused everything? Um, this was a black planet first. Um, that's by not just saying it, by way of evidence that has been found. And um, the thing about it, that's such a good question, such a good question because a lot of times we limit ourselves to the planet when there's a whole cosmos out there. You know, we're dealing with omniverse. And many beings from many places, even some of you are may, may be a reincarnation of all types of beings. So um, it's not just about the planet Earth. The planet Earth itself has gone through its um, history. It, wasn't, it was a lot bigger than what it is today. 
and you know it's had many accidents um, like the Nibiru accident for example or even the meteorites that had to wipe out the dinosaurs so yeah um, it was originally a black planet by the Natharu and then other beings came afterwards there were immigration laws for beings not to come here but people still did um, and that's where the confusion came in because you know Originally, there were only the Pataites, the, the small beings that people refer to insultingly as the pygmies. And they were like, the women were like four, four foot five inches, and the men were five inch, four inches. And that's the height of all the beings on the planet. Then this Nephilims or these beings that came, they tell you about this in Genesis 6. They came and mixed their seed, breaking the immigration law, and raped and produced offspring. And that's why there are different heights on the planet now, because the genes go back to these giants, as they call them. All right? Okay, cool. One donation that you missed, just that one. Um, oh, I thought I'd done that one. Okay. Um, again, forgive me if I don't pronounce your name right. C. Dubo. Um, thank you again for your kind gesture. Malachi Yorf is thought the Anunnaki reincarnated. Absolutely, 100%. Um, but like I say, he's known by many, many names or titles that describe what the being is doing or the assignment that he's carrying out at the time. And he's an avatar as well, an, av an avatar, because they even make movies like the Avatar, um, which explain that he's not um, able, he's able to be channeled, but not any and any being can channel him because it's, it's by control. And so he was able to clean up all the information on the planet from all the different teachers that came. So, for example, you look at like the, Sci the Maury Science Temple, he was able to... Because most of these teachers and leaders, the minute they left, other people stepped in and perverted the teachings or took it in a completely different direction. So when he was on his mission to give us Wu Sabat or Wu Nuapu, um, he will encounter different people that came from different schools, like I was saying, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, um, Noble Drew Ali, um, name it, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, all these people, their followers would um, ask him questions and he was able to receive affirmation or be channeled to set the record straight, even on all the lessons, for example, breaking down like the Yaqub story better than anybody in the nation of Islam had ever done. And so he cleared up everything and then went on to giving us what he came to give, which was Wu Sabat. Okay, we have another caller. Let's go. We're going fast and furious today. Um, Rahubat, greetings. Um, could you say your name, where you're calling from, and then ask your question, please? Can you hear me? I think the call's falling out, so we'll come back to it. Yeah, it's cut off. All right, let me look at some of the chat because uh, I feel like I'm not addressing their question. Is he back? Hello. Hey, greetings. Rahul back. Greetings. Rahul back. What's your yes, name? Where are uh, you calling from? Just, uh, yeah, this is Jerry Jamal. Okay. Oh, Rahul back. I'm calling from, from Zambia. Yeah. Yes, I think I called in last time, yeah. Yeah, you're in our Telegram group as well, right? Sure, sure, I am. Yeah, yeah, you'll be asking a lot of questions. It's good. You're learning and studying. That's great. Go ahead. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, there's uh, one uh, video I watched where the master teacher was saying he met Melchizedek. Uh, yeah, that's but, right. Uh, that's, yes. And then, so like I'm trying to understand, like, and then we, like, we know that he's the incarnation. Right. Of the master teacher, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, like, so does it mean, like, there are several personalities or how does it work? Like, okay, I got And you. then I think you, in one of the videos, you have mentioned something like, Ila Mutajasu, something Yes, like that. that's right. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, so I just want you to explain the concept so that I can fully understand, like, how is it, is it multiple personalities or is it different things in at different Time, yeah, I got the question. I got you. All right. So, yes. yeah, so Melchizedek is, as I said before, 
depending on which language you're using, it will be Malachi Zadok or Malachi or Murdoch. Excuse me. So he's asking the question that how did he meet him? So yes, um, he explains that he met Melchizedek when he was at a junction of the two Niles when he was in Egypt. And um, before he came to realize who this being really was, he, the being told him when they met, because you can even read that in um, the famous scroll, Man from Planet Risk, right? Where he really goes into the detail of that. So if you haven't got that, you can get hold of that. Um, yeah, he was explaining that this being um, as an entity was with him all his life, but because the being can personify, um, he was able to meet him in person, not realizing that when he, the being said to him, anytime you need me, just call on me and I will be with you. He didn't realize that he was him coming out of himself and, and basically mirror, mirroring the being, because he's a triunion being. So later on, when he was um, developing and realizing who he was, he realized that when the being said to him, I will, be, I will always be with you, anytime you need me, just call. And so when he was speaking or writing the books, it was that being that was guiding his pen. That's why he always said that he is the pen that is guided. But that same being is known by different names, as I said, because those are titles of this being that, um, like I use Tahuti as one of those names that is reincarnating over time. So, yeah, that question is like later on he realized that he realized that that being was, in for lack of a better word, completely engulfing him. So when he would speak or when he would write, um, that being would be the one that is actually in control. And he said that he's amazed by the information that the pen is guided to to bring forth to us. Um, but yeah, he is, um, the physical body of him is Malachi Z. York, who was born of a mother and a father, just like all of us. And, um, but he is, um, for lack of a better word, like we have a soul and a spirit. That soul being is that being called Melchizedek or Malachi, all right? Um, but yeah, read the, the scroll, Man from Planet Risk. Read um, the Proverbs of Yanun, the Gospel of Yanun, the Akasha Records. Um, these are all scrolls by, by him that go into more about who he is. In fact, do you know what? Um, if I could just, because that is a question that, because I remember there was a Christian that tried to, um, yeah, this, this scroll here, the Akasha Records, I'm going to read a little bit from that. There's a Christian that was saying, oh, that means he's being possessed. No, because a possession is when any being or entity can enter your being and take control of you without you having any control or at will. So um, that's not the case when it comes to the master teacher because not any, any entity or anybody can just, um, you know, take his control of his vessel. Right, so I'm gonna, I want to read you a little piece from this Akasha Records because it talks about the, the question you've asked. Um, I want to find a, a, oh, here we go. Right, so I'm going to read from um, the Akasha Records, which is series number 72, from page 19, which just happens to be an incredible, incredible coincidence in terms of the number. Right, so he, he re, it reads from um, it reads from nine to two. Uh, no, I don't want to go there. I want to make it as quick as possible. Okay, right. I read from nine to five. Right, where he says, "As a child, I did not speak one word or sound before the age of four years old, four months, and fourth day. On that day, I spoke for the very first time, to the shock of all who thought I was mute." At age nine, I had my first visit by four greys, Krill, Sa'at, and Aloma. Um, one, Arima, Arima, sorry, Arima was 
he was shot in Kentucky by a white farmer. And he says, I met them in New Jersey in the year 1953 AD at age nine from the date which I was taken for three days and nights and returned. That's when he was taken as in a, in a craft. Over the years, they have come to me right up until now. I even have a hybrid daughter named Luchat who comes and speaks with me when I think of her. Well, it is me. What I am about to tell you is the truth. You must let it be known. It is time. I know you will doubt this story. I, now, I know I would if I was not me myself. I'm going to tell you something I never told anyone. My very first encounter with the three aliens was in October 12, 1955 AD. I was 10 years old in Tenak, New Jersey. It was night. I was coming back from Brooklyn, New York, seeing my family. It was cold, dark. I had to walk from the bus stop, 102 bus to the house, 245 College Avenue, Tenak, New Jersey, where I, I lived. As I walked, I saw a bright light above me, um, a craft. I could not move. A ramp extended from it. It was not very big. Then I saw what looked like a shadow of a child not bigger than I was, yet then I noticed this big black bee-like eyes and a big head, long arms and fingers. I wanted to run, yet I could not move. Then I noticed two others come down the ramp. The first came right up to me and put his finger right above my eyes at my brow. The fear was gone. It spoke inside my head and said, we will not hurt you, I am Sahat. That is what I am called. He turned and pointed at the other two that is Alomar, she is my sister and he is cruel. I could see the spelling of their names as he spoke. He said, we arrived on this planet, this time September 1955 AD in Kentucky. We were sent to find you. We will need you. At 10 years old, I did not understand. They each touched me, looked in my eyes and all at once said, yes, we found him. This is he. Alomar took my hand, let led me up the ramp into the craft. I don't know how long I was there. They put something up in my nose. It hurt at first, then touched my face again. The pain left. They showed me around the craft. There were others of them who looked at me, yet said nothing. All right, so one of them, I don't know, I don't remember, said, we will be with you from time to time. Your race sent us. They will also come to you once you're of age to better understand. Then, like a flash, I was back on the road, alone. Um, but as it goes on and goes on and goes on, it's going to start talking about how he basically grew into knowing and realizing who he is. Um, okay, I'm going to skip because, as I said, I don't want to be too much, but I'm going to go to um, 148. He says, he told me he was Al-Qadir. This is who we're calling the green one, or no, Chosidi. And that he will... He will soul into mine, that he will merge his soul into mine, that I will become a teacher of many, right? He spoke Arabic, and at that time, I did not know al qadir and Melchizedek were one and the same. This is what I wanted to get to. He is also called Gauzu in Sumeria and the Houthi in Egypt. In time, he made it all clear. He said, you will have many visitors over time, and when you think to know a thing, it will come to you. Just speak. We will speak by way of you. Your life will be hard. Stay with it no matter what. Um, and then obviously it goes on and on and on. But you'll find that whole story in there and um, in the Man from Planet Risk. So I hope that's answered your question. I did take that time out because that's a question that people find hard to comprehend. How is he doing all the things that he does? Is because... He was chosen and was sent by our ancestors, the Parnatharu, to do this work. And of course, like they said, it's going to be hard. And that's why he has had to suffer and in the hands of, you know, the adversaries who are imprisoning him. And he's been incarcerated and all the lies and all the trumped up charges and everything. This is why, you know, we have to make sure this information gets out and... Um, yeah, I hope that's answered that question. Let me carry on. Um, I just got another... <laughs> Is it? Okay. Let me just... Um, 
I really, I think everyone on this call right now who is typing questions that haven't been answered, um, join the Telegram group, it's in the chat, because you can still ask your questions and we will answer them in due time because there are other student teachers in the group as well. I can't find the one you're talking about. Is it D? The first one is, what God created the first people on this planet? Okay, that's D, yeah. Um, what God created the first people of this planet. See, the word God is a religious concept. And because we've been programmed to always think about there was one being called God that created everything, that's something of a spell that you need to break because it's not God, it's plural, gods, or um, our ancestors. And another mistake is people thinking, because they're trapped within people, places, and things on this planet, that life forms are only on this planet and there's not because of the the suppression of other life forms extraterrestrials um you know it's been kept under wraps for so long that because now it's becoming more and more open people think everything started on this planet there were life forms that have existed for millions and trillions of years before ours and they're just so far more intelligent they are the ones that are coming here and trying to guide or hinder humanity and then stories are written about them and books are given to guide people or to hinder them and in those books they refer to themselves as God because you have to ask yourself, when you say God, that is an English word that you're using and somebody created the English language and somebody created the word because somebody have, had to name God, God. And this is where you start to break the spell by thinking outside of, you know, outside of the box, as they say. So when you say who created God or what God created the first people of this planet, that will go back to the Parnatharu who come from Orion and Sirius and other places, other constellations. And they, their genetics were placed here by way of them injecting it into a Vulcan being, which we know today as the dolphin. And then that was seeded on the planet. And life evolved and grew in the waters, in the deep seas, for millions of years, right? And then different types of beings live and have got cities in the deep, deep, deep seas and in the caverns of the planet Earth. And so the whole concept of God creating the first people, if you're saying people, then you're going to talk about those first humanoid beings that came out of the waters onto land, known as the Patarites in ancient Egypt, pre-dynastic. Um, they're known as, you know, the, the Neolithic. There are different names for them, but that would be the first people. And the first would be the females known as, um, the Ogdoads, right, which is, you know, the different pairs of beings that came out of what people consider ancient Egypt, um, which is Nun Nunet, He Hihet, Ket Kiket, Amun Amunet, and then the nine Inneads come out of them, and, and then, you know, that's why everyone says that life and everything, civilization, began in Egypt, or what they call Egypt anyway. Uh, Okay, and what's the question? Oh, is that the Th Thoth and Tahuti question? Okay, explain in his tablets that his teacher is named the Dweller and chose three to carry out knowledge records, but where are the other two? Right, they, 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 we just spoke about there are beings that are not on this plane that speak through him and teach him and he receives information by, when I say teach him, by way of his pen. Because he writes and then he reads the stuff that are guided by the pen and then he's amazed of, of what, you know, they teach. So yes, he's, he's also a part of the nine. The, there's a council of nine. Um, have I got that scroll with me? The council of nine, who were re the real owners of this planet, which is now being... Um, it's being kind of controlled by the um, Andromedans, 
um, who are androgynous, which is causing some of the stuff going on on the planet. But that's, that's a whole other story. Um, yeah, so he is part of them as the Council of Nine, all right, um, which are those, the nine highest in the tier. But then you have what people call the 24 elders. So there are different councils that work together, and he sits on all the council as the highest being, as Yanun. Yeah, so he, he, they don't work in isolation. They work together in harmony and in unity and in love. And this is what they're trying to teach us to do. But we are so divided, so programmed by the spell of six ether that we have to now eradicate that with nine ether. Nine mind, nine thinking, which we refer as right knowledge, right wisdom, and the right understanding that will lead you to the higher knowledge known as sound right reasoning. Of course, that comes with work of you studying, learning the language, and um, basically applying the teachings of Wusabat, unifying and building and doing great things like your ancestors did, as we, we did and we can do again. We are the pilots that are piloting the spacecraft that we are seeing. Are they black? And is it a way to tell from the spacecraft who the pilots are? Great question, because like I said, there's different species of being with different crafts, some for different races on the planet because their DNA is related to those beings. This is why you can't just go on any craft. It's like even here, would you just, go, if somebody was driving and just pulled up and said, come in in, in in his car or her car, would you just go in? You would need to know that person, right? Because you don't know what they're going to do. They're going to kidnap you. What are they going to do to you? So. Is the same when we're dealing with these visitations and crafts and beings coming here because some of them are literally taking you for food. Some of them are your maybe your family. So it's important to learn and to know which crafts, who it is, and what's you know what's their motive. Um, and you're going to learn this through Wusabat. Join the Telegram group because we when we have more time, we post, you know, links and images and videos and many, many references that will help you. But let me say this. Um, some people are just like knowledge junkies, for lack of a better word. It's not just about just, uh, just, just obtaining all this knowledge, all the knowledge. You've got to put it into work. Knowledge without practice is in vain. It's about coming together and building and working to do great things, to help humanity, you know, because someone has put their life on the line to make sure that this information gets out to help you, to transform you into the supreme being that you're supposed to be without the restrictions and, um, you know, all the, all the obstacles that, the lies and all the things that have been subjected to us by beings who just wanted to literally control you and um, make you a slave. And now someone is here to break that spell. It's going to happen anyway. It's an inevitability. Whether, you know, we're all passing through. Right? We're only here for some time and Wu Sabat is going to be here. And um, are you going to be here with it? That's the, that's the question. Thank you, Swiss. I love... Yeah, thank you. Love what I'm doing. I, I, I'm really just, I'm just one of the student teachers. We're all student teachers. We sit in the seat of a student more than as a teacher. But once you have a passion and you realize the mission and what this is about, you know, it, it's something that you will live for, um, literally. And um, there's no greater thing or task, there's nothing more noble than to help others and to, to see the potential in other people and to see what the master teacher has done for us. We, that's the living example, still alive, still, you know, still showing us love, even despite the predicament he's in, we know he's going to be free. And um, if we're all mind linked, connected, putting that energy, 
um, it, it will definitely, definitely help. The chants, the, you know, all the, all the chants we have, the ancestors hear us. Okay, let me keep going. Question, um, is it just the man propaganda that must us fear concern so much about alien? Yeah, well, it's the, it's the, it's the media, because people say aliens, but then when you ask them to explain or describe what an alien is, it's going to be something they've seen on a movie or some, some interpretation which detracts from the word extraterrestrial. Because when you break it down like extraterrestrial, you're literally saying something extra that is come to the terrain or this terrestrial plane as opposed to outside of the planet, which is celestial. And when you say, OK, who is outside of here and where is that? They will tell you in the religious world, Allah, God, Jesus, the angels, they're all outside of the earth somewhere, right? Then you say, okay, does that mean they are aliens? And all of a sudden, it's like, it's not crazy anymore, is it? Because if Jesus came down from heaven and went back to heaven and God is in heaven, where is this heaven and what are they referred to? Because they're not from here. They're extra to the terrain, the extraterrestrials. But when you say aliens, you think of movies and you think of things like, um, I don't know, Independence Day and all the movies that show you the different types of extraterrestrials to the point where um, they, they, they're grotesque looking, they're coming to harm you. It's always about survival, you know, they're coming to harm us. How do you know? You know, because this is what the movies and the media does to make people afraid of them. But there are different types. And not all of them are harmful or here to harm you. Yeah, so you're right, Swiss, that people are just afraid of the unknown and they don't, they're taught not to question, not to use their mind. Because when you think, you, you think of a question, it's like, okay, that's intelligence. How did I think of that question? If I can't question God, Allah, or these religious deities, and they're supposed to know everything and they control my mind and they know what I'm going to think. Did they not know I'm going to think of that question? Why didn't they stop me? You see, so this is all fear based on these beings saying they're going to burn you up. You're going to go to a place called hell and you should ask yourself what loving God would create a place called hell. He can't help you whilst you're alive, even though they say you can pray and communicate directly with him. But when you do, you don't get the help. Because he says he gave you free will to choose to do anything you want. But if you choose to go against him, he punishes you. And he can punish you when you, when you die in a place called hell. But he can't help you when you're alive and want to know answers like, why don't you just get rid of all the evil in the world? Why don't you get rid of all the, you know, the bad things in the world so we can all get along? Can you not just make us all get along? You know, these are the things that, no, he can't do that. Oh, you can't communicate with him directly for the things that you want to know. Only the things that they ask you through the Bible to do. And the Bible is where you know about him and he controls you through that. You say, but what happened when the Bible wasn't around? The Bible was only what? 6,000 years old, the planet's been there for millions of years. All right, so does the Bible predict the future in Revelation or has it already happened and um, are we on a repeat? Good question. That's from Purple Roll. Now, most of the, 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 the book of Revelation is not, it's not revealing anything. Most of it has already happened. And um, because you're dealing with extraterrestrials that can travel in time back and forth, they were able to see visions or remote view or see certain things before they happen, and um, they wrote about them. So by the time it comes around, people are like, oh, it was predicted. Um, but yeah, if you understand that these beings can travel outside of our time zone, um, and that's another thing, time doesn't move like in a linear fashion, it's, it's more of a, a circle, and you can jump to any other points of the circle back and forth, all right? I know we've got another caller. 
Greetings, caller. How you doing? What's your name? Where you calling from? Greetings, bro. What's up? Uh, I'm Boozy. I, I go by Boozy Nine Ether. And Boozy Nine Ether, like the you. name. Yeah, I learned a lot from you. You feel me? Cause I, feel I know it. religion. It's, it's about our ancestors, right? So I was, uh, I was asking, like, okay, you know how evil? You feel like an evil spirit on you? Yeah. How do you call? Like, if we call our ancestors, like, would that would they like help us out through that situation? Would they uh got us? Yeah, on that. they will. You have like, bo both. Um, we don't really say good and bad because um, humans tend to think of things as good and bad, but it's really agreeable and disagreeable. And yeah, they will help you if you are in tune and connect with them. You actually have disagreeable ancestors too who they don't want you to progress because they may be utilising your vessel to live what they want to live through the physical world. You know, so um, some of them are, are trying to keep you safe. For example, if you wanted to clean up yourself in terms of your diet or the things, the habits that you have, if they like, because they feed, remember, everything is energy. They feed through what you're doing because they're connected to you and they can use your vessel. So um, when you align yourself with the positive ones or the agreeable ones, they will help you. This is why... People say jihad, right, in Islam is the war of good and bad. It's really a war between your agreeable and disagreeable within yourself. I explained that you have that disagreeable reptilian nature, which is not a bad thing when you need to use it. So if you needed to defend yourself or you were in a particular situation that needed you to bring out that nature, you would use it. But we're not the aggressor. We don't really promote violence. We promote promote love and peace. But like I'm saying that what you have to do is control it, suppress it, and you will not need to use it unless you absolutely have to. And if you do that, you will suppress those disagreeable voices and ancestors that are stopping you from elevating or progressing. And then the ones that want you to will help you. They help you all the time, but there's always that conflict between what we call the jihad or the war in between the agreeable and disagreeable within you. Of course, there's also external agreeable and disagreeable beings that also can influence you. And um, so you go fight against those. And then there's a, a whole system of, you know, agreeable and disagreeable on the planet. People that are controlling the world that want to influence you in a particular direction to, to create that energy that feeds the disagreeable. And the way we overcome it is to um, basically suppress that energy. You know, that's why everyone says love is a language that, you know, transcends people, places and things. So we're dealing with real love. It will definitely, um, it will overcome or conquer the, the hate, the disagreeableness, yeah? Uh, okay, let's keep going. Death is an illusion. You are eternal beings having temporary human experiences. Absolutely, you're here to master and, um, you know, transcend and go to the next level. And death is the doorway to that next level. However, you can keep coming back if you haven't mastered or developed enough to move on. Okay. Yep, um, Sun Ra 999, Ethereans return to a higher realm after their earthly experience. Yeah, we are Ethereans too. We're just on a lower vibration. And the higher you go, you don't need to come back low unless you, you, you will to. So Ethereans, those that have gone all the way to the ninth um, realm, who are pure energy beings, they have the ability now to transcend and come down and up at will. Um, not everyone has that ability. Some people are only able to get to certain realms. Beings that have mixed themselves or have compromised their being, like, um, you know, 60 for beings who have mixed with animals and things like that, they're not able to transcend further than, say, six, six ether or the sixth um, realm. Okay, we've got another question. Greetings, Rahul Bat caller. What's your name? Where you calling from? And what's your question, please? Hi, I'm calling. My name is um, Temba. I'm calling from Ohio, Columbus. And my question is, 
Um, do us about believing the supreme creator. Okay. The first question I would ask you is, who is the supreme creator? Like the Almighty, like there, there, there's somebody, there's something that created the world that is powerful above everything that mankind has to submit to. Right. Who's that? That's my question. I want to know. Right. If I, I did that on me. purpose to show you how religion has people under this belief. Because you first said, "Does Wu Sabat believe?" And the first thing we would tell you is that belief is based on you accepting things without proof, right? Things you do not know. You can Google that right now. What is, what's the meaning of the word belief? So we don't believe. We do research. We ask questions and we study and we go by evidence. And the evidence will be the facts. So that concept of one supreme being does not exist. It doesn't even exist in the Bible because when you start to read the Bible, in Genesis, when it says um, God created the heavens and earth in the beginning, right? That alone, in the beginning, like the first thing you're going to say is who is talking? What is the beginning? If they're already there and they're talking about a beginning, that means that's not the beginning because they're telling you and narrating a story saying in the beginning God did this. But the thing is that first word God in the English it's giving you the impression that is one single being that is the creator of everything. But when you go into the Hebrew where it's being taken from in that Genesis story, the word is Elohim. And when you search what does Elohim mean in Hebrew, it's plural. So there is no one God at the beginning. It's, it's a group of beings. And then it starts to tell you about these beings by giving you the different names like Yahweh, um, you know, Baal, um, Adonai, El Shad, El Shadi, you keep going for Yahweh and you keep going through and you see that these are different beings, different characters that are all being translated into the English as God, 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 God. Then when you ask the question, who is God, they would play the game of saying, well, the capital G, capital G, capital O, capital D is one different God to a capital G, small O, and small D. And then and, and that's a different one to the small D, small O, small G. But this is games because in the Hebrew, there is no such thing, all right? So when you say who is the supreme being, you're talking about our ancestors, the Parnatharu. They are the, the ones that seeded life on this planet. And they're the ones that created even what you're calling the moon, the stars, and, you know, the planets. There are beings that are so advanced that they are actually able to be the guardians of the universe, guardians of the galaxies, you see. So um, it's the concept of what you consider to be God. There is no one person that did what you're saying, all right? So that's where you have to learn, and we have to upgrade very quickly and break that spell of religion. All right, I hope that's answered that question for you. Um, Ajayi, is it Ajayi? Ajayi? C double. Oh, wow. C double is giving us a lot of love, showing us a lot of love. Um, trying to find it. Why doesn't he just come to the top? Uh, is it is that one? Okay, yeah, all right. Yeah, we have to show, yeah, they, that one, keep going. Okay. Uh, I found my spiritual name, though my guide, through my guide inside, is that one? Yeah. My name is Sakad, I'm being guided to Egypt normal. Okay. Yeah, um, when you start to realize your power and your potential, and you connect with your ancestors, and you're not afraid, and you're able to communicate with them, just like we're having a communication or conversation right now. They will show you things and guide you and prepare you um, and give you messages and things. So it's, it's something that is very natural once you start to not be afraid of it. You see, religion teaches us to be afraid because they 
teach you that there is an end and they worship the dead through um, necromancy, which is about worshipping the dead. This is why more people turn up to funerals than they do to when you're coming in and when it's life. And so it's all about spookism, it's all about being trapped, it's all about being scared of going to hell and all these kind of things. They, they say that and then you say, how can I die if energy cannot be destroyed? And then scientifically, they know that's a fact. So there is no hell because no one's been there and come back. You're dealing with concepts of ancient times going into the underworld where there were all of these different types of extraterrestrials. Some of them are not agreeable and they would torture you or do certain things. Some of it is mythology. Some of it is just dealing with states of consciousness, states of vibration um, in terms of you can give yourself hell, nightmares and all kinds of things based on the resonance frequencies that you connect with and associate with. So, you know, you have to break that, that spell of religion and start to think with nine mind. Um, all right, so let's keep going. There are so many questions. If you're not subscribed to OSM Vision already, please do that now. Trust me, that little thing that you do will help and um, become a member. Help us, help you to help us. Okay, <laughs> that's good. Uh, uh, get that. Woos about the way forward. Greetings coming from St. Lucia. Absolutely. Greetings. Um, that's Jesse Alexander. Well done. Um, okay, always some vision you're misleading me. <laughs> that unk design doesn't exist. Okay, I don't know what that's about, but when you say it doesn't exist, if you can see it, it obviously exists. Um, this is what we're saying that, you know, people will say things like, we're making this up, but it's like, okay, even if we did make it up, is it good or bad for you? Is it positive? Because it's about creation. This is known as the Anktui in our language, it's the double resurrection for those who are waking up a second time from the sleep and uh, are ready for this new cycle. Not everybody's gonna agree or resonate or is ready at the same time. But those who are will move forward. That's how it works. Um, we're, not, we're not a religious group. We're not here to convert people or recruit you. This comes from your heart. It comes from your soul and your being resonating, your ancestors guiding you to, to what's right for you. And um, you know, if you don't feel this is for you and you want to stay in six ether, stay in ignorance, stay in belief, stay in all this falseness, you're happy to do so, but realize the consequences of that because that's all gonna fade away and you will fade away with it. So, you know, there is no really option than to elevate. Um, nobody wants to do, um, nobody wants to have lies, live in lies and suffer and, you know, deal with this low vibration. Nobody really wants that. Most people do want facts and truth. You know, if you were suffering um, from some type of illness, would you want to believe that you're going to be okay or would you want to know based on actual facts? Um, okay, we've covered that already. Let me keep going. Uh, free Dr. Malachi Z. York, Sovereign Nick, yes, absolutely. We all should be shouting and screaming that making noise about it, making videos about it until we have such a force that, you know, we, we, we do it, we make it happen. Okay, got another caller. All right, live caller, what's your name, where you calling from? What's your question, please? Yeah, yeah greetings, Travis from Belize. Greetings. Uh, I'm call yeah, I'm calling about uh, my, like, my situation of listening to all your stuff and trying to live this style, you know? Mm -hmm. And now when I'm around people now, it's hard for me to like transition from me in my house listening to this than going outside now. Like I, everybody is like, I judge everything that people talk to me. <laughs> yeah. be like everything they're saying to me, like I feel like, you know, like I'm a different person now. Like it, it's hard for me to, 
listen when people tell me something now because I'm always guessing is this true is that you know yeah it puts, yeah like I'm in a I don't know how to say it but it just have me oh I know what, what, like, most of us have experienced what you're going through because what it is you're raising your vibration you're changing your energy you're changing your aura your mind is different so you, when you're around people that are not vibrating on that same frequency it's going to be difficult because you are now your eye your third eye is open you're able to see everything and pick everything up and you've got to learn now how to control and deal with it in a way that you're not being um offensive to anyone you're not coming across like egotistical like you know everything and you know it all you just have to share with those who are willing and open to listen but focus on working on yourself because your example is going to be ultimately what um what matters you know because people may people watch and scrutinize more than maybe anything yep. so they're watching you and um you have to be that great example and representation for Wu Sabat. It's just like if you don't smoke and you go into a room full of smoke, you're going to feel very yeah. uncomfortable in it. So you're going to want to leave. That's going to be what's happening because ultimately people are descending souls and you've got people that are ascending and you meet each other and you either resonate with those people or you don't. And unfortunately, you may have to distance yourself because they will pull you down whilst you're trying to go up. And so you have to, yeah, isolate sometimes. And it can be a bit of a lonely journey because once you're sparked off, you know, you're a different person. You really are different. It's not like religion where you get dipped in water and you're born again and then you go back and carry no, on no, living no, your no. life the same way. <laughs> yeah, so I hope that's no. answered your question. Yeah, it helped me a lot. Thanks very much. You're welcome. All right, let's carry on with the... Texas, yeah, I know about Bigfoot and they actually live in clans, okay. Uh, I know the Bible is meant to be decoded. Yesterday I was reading Revelation. Is the seven stars that Jesus had in his right hand related to the seven sister star? Exactly, that's because religion is actually from the Pleiadians. The Pleiadians are the ones that gave people religion. So yeah, you're right, the, the, that, the number seven is that seal that was over the Bible, just like the number 19 over the Quran. And so when you start to look at that seven, seven stars, seven um, churches, seven sisters, and it ties into, you know, seven candlesticks of the, you know, the menorah, it's just, that, that's because the number seven, and I see your names free your mind, seven, 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 that's interesting. So when you, we were studying the school of religion, that will be the highest number in that book. However, we know we're higher than seven because we're nine, nine ether. So you have to graduate from the seven to the eight to the nine. All right. I noticed that you wear a ponytail. What is the reason for that? Um, it's in our culture. It, it actually is explained um, in the scroll that we have called... The Lotus, yeah, the Lotus of Life is the Gospel of Yanun on the Sacred Feminine. And it explains everything about, we, we call it a Majal, which is symbolic of, remember when I, well, I say that, there's a video I've done. If you look on the Master's picture, he's wearing it as well. But it ties into the fact that when you're looking at, when you're a tadpole, right, as a sperm, you look like that where you have the tail and that goes into your into your brain into your mind so it's our culture it shows that i'm a sabian i mean there are many things that will show someone that you're of a different culture um, and us females they also can wear the braid on the left or the right hand side um, th th there is a lot of information in here um, let me just see if i can show you quickly but ultimately, like I said, um, everything we teach comes from the scrolls, from the master teacher. Of course, everyone has their own personal life experiences that they can um, tie into, you know, what they can relate to by way of the doctrine. But you really need to study the scrolls. You need to read. You need to study. 
that's unless you have some kind of, um, you know, some kind of health reason why you can't um, read. But we have audio as well. You can listen, you know. We have all the avenues. I just had it. Uh, we have all the avenues that help you to, um, to get the information in one way or another. Okay, um, today is not, I can't seem to find anything I want today, but I know it's in here. I might have to get an assistant to start finding things for me so we keep going. Um, where is it? All right, let me keep going. Um, yeah, it's, it's in this scroll. I know that for a fact. It's actually in this scroll. Oh, here we go. Got an assistant. Yeah, um, when I find it, I'll show you about the braid. But that's why we wear it. It's our culture. It makes us look different. It's just like you might see a Sikh that has a, um, a turban. And you'll be like, oh, that's a Sikh. Or you see a Muslim or people wearing a particular cultural um, attire or symbols and things. Yeah, That's what it's about. Um, next question. Uh, if we are here to raise our vibration, where are we going to have to re why where are we going to have to repeat it twenty four thousand times if we don't get it right? Who are these people who are stopping us from reaching our vibration it's It's wherever you are every day, whatever you're doing, you have agreeable and disagreeable positive negative beings that are thank you yeah beings that are going to help you or hinder you and when you say, after the 24,000th time, if you haven't learned, if you haven't made it, then you cease to be able to have that ability to experience different realms and live other lives, as in you're living a life now or having this experience now in this physical body. On another realm, you will have the same, but it will be on a different vibration, on a different realm, how that realm works. You know, here you deal with gravity and so forth. Other realms, you don't deal with that. So there are lots of different experiences you can have as a 76 trillion year old being based on, you know, your genetics. Right. Um, my good brother found the picture I was trying to show you. All right. That deals with the, the braids. All right. And it ties into, um, I'll just read a little bit. So it says, um, let me go from. So, know this, the left brain is male power, analytical, and right brain is female images. These two must become one for perfection of thinking and doing. Nashat, energy, in motion or emotional beings, which is soul. This is the symbol of the braid worn on the left or right side by the holder of the double helix of the mitochondria DNA of female or M other, mother of us both. Okay, so, and then it says, and the male wears his Mijdal braid in the back to relate to the back of the medulla, the medulla oblongata. Yet both mother and father, male and female, need to connect and use the frontal lobe of the brain and then the pineal gland, like the pine cone to the evergreen. And then it goes on into the more scientific reasons why and so forth, all right? We've got another donation, it looks like, from Dubu. Um, that is love you're showing us today. So many donations. All right, I don't know how, but... I don't know how, but I do not meditate in the traditional way. But things still feel like they're being downloaded to me. I've never meditated, though. Is it possible some people do not need to? Absolutely. Like, this is what we are saying in Wusabat. Um, not everybody's painted with the same brush. And um, I, I, do, I experience what you're saying. I get that. Um, so, yeah, it is possible. It's about being in tune at um, the moment because... You could be downloaded at any time. You just have to be able to tune to that frequency. Think of it like, like a radio. Because a lot of times, some people are so... They, they, like, like it says, be in the world, but not of it. 
So even though you're here physically, your mind and your connection and your thoughts may not be here and you're connected to the mental reservoir and to receive affirmation from other realms. Um, this is what it's all about. So it's not really about, because people think it's just sitting down, closing their eyes, and some people think sitting down, close your eyes and fold your legs and, and that's it and you're meditating. Meditating is really the concentration and the focus to be able to connect by way of frequency and energy to focus on something. That could be you pulling things from the mental reservoir and manifesting them in the physical world. This is why people say things like, um, I want to make money or you know, people are chasing money. And this was a question that came up previously. And I'm like, because the thoughts are wrong, you're already gonna be failing because you're flawed. You don't make money. When to make money, you're talking about the Federal Reserve and like um, what you call like the Bank of England and uh, you know, they make the money because they actually physically make the money. So when people say, I want to make money, you can't make money. So you're thinking about it in the wrong way. So that's not going to manifest. And if you say you're chasing money, you can't chase money because that's an illusion because money is not something that has legs and is running and you're chasing it. I'm saying that to say that it's about attracting what you want by tuning yourself or raising your vibration to the frequency that will resonate with that thing. But it's not just about thinking about it. It's also about your intentions. This is all covered in our course and on the book, in the book, the online course and in the book, because we teach people about how to manifest things. It's about what you're saying here, where you're able to connect and tune in and be on a vibration where you attract whatever you need to you. And that will be in, in out formation, coming from outside in to information inside your head, inside the planet, inside this realm so that you're able to then bring that thing to life in the physical world, all right? So that's an excellent question, and thanks again for your donation. Is that another one? Okay, no, it's the same one, all right, cool. Let's keep going. I tried to call, but it's not working. Um, that's from Marcus. You've got, I don't know if you're from the UK, but if you're outside the UK, don't forget to put the, the area code, plus four four, and then call. Um, or maybe you were calling when somebody else was on the line or something, but try again. Uh, this is my last time. Oh, is that your last 24,000 cycle? Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's that what you mean. Um, that's Harseed432. Okay, let's keep going. Yes, a lot here for one last ride. Yeah, some people know this is their last time, and that's why you've got to get it right, because... You either don't come back and continue and experience other realms and dimensions and things, or you cease to have that opportunity and ability. Can you just imagine the opportunity to be able to leave here and go to the higher realms and experience that and then go to the higher realms when you're dealing with the multiverses and omniverses and the possibilities of what you can experience in other existence? Um, so would you want to not, you know, have that experience? I mean especially if it's going to be a much better experience than the one here. Okay. Partarak, um, hello tribe, Nubian Emperor. What do you think about psychic attacks and how to prevent them? Yep, the master teacher doesn't leave any stone unturned. He's taught us about using what we call a, a, a psychic self-defense. That's knowing about creating a shield or able to ref deflect negativity or able to take it, transform it into positivity and sending it back out. Yeah, people will try and atta attack you in many ways, um, but you just got to learn how to counteract that. Is life fated or will all have a choice? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I can't pronounce your name. Vu Wavho. This is why we say the difference with Wu Sabat, you have to understand, is 
We deal with fate, F-A-T-E, but in religion, they tell you to deal with and believe faith, F-A-I-T-H. And you say, am I spelling that right? F-A-I-T. Yeah. Um, fate is where things happen based on the conditions, the right conditions. And you have voluntary and involuntary actions. So um, if I throw something up, it's going to come down, right? Um, unless I'm in a different realm where the laws of gravity don't work. So our fate is in our actions and in our um, our actions and what we do, what our ancestor di ancestors did, and what we're going to leave as a legacy for those coming up, right? So we have to be the ones to, by living the way you're supposed to, that's your fate, by believing someone and accepting things that don't work and trying to please a god or a, a deity that tells you and promises you things that are unproven, um, that's going to lead you astray. So some people know that they should practice Wu Sabat, which is a culture that deals with, you know, being animist and dealing with our ancestors, dealing with nature, dealing with fate. So we know what's the outcome because we are ontologists. We've been here for many, many cycles. And when you believe, then you're just being led astray because people say have faith until you say, what does that mean? They say, just know that God will protect you. And you say, all right, if there was danger, would you close your eyes and walk into the danger and say, God is going to protect me? They'll say, no. Would you walk across a busy highway with cars coming really fast with your eyes closed and hope you're going to cross from one side to the other? and just have faith. No, you wouldn't. So again, that's tricknology. Tricknology is trick knowledge. You have to be smart and wise enough to see through it. Are the pictures in the books of our ancestors accurate because they look very realistic, almost photographic? Are they accurate? Yes. Again, that's a question that when the master teacher Parna Babyanun, Dr. Malachi Z. York, was taking us through the school of religion, in Islam, they said it's a sin to have pictures. And then they do have pictures of Muhammad. And if you go into a lot of Arab countries, you see pictures. The reason, there were many reasons for that. The reason was because when you see pictures, they will connect you, as they say, to your ancestors. They say a picture tells a thousand words. So when you start to look on the walls of Egypt, you'll be able to see yourself in those images. But not only that, when there's a crime, for example, to give a good analogy, um, they get artists to try and draw a picture based on what the description that maybe the person who was um, attacked or whatever gives, and they, they call it an artist impression. But with the right energy, they can actually come up with something very realistic. And also, there are people who have the ability to remote view to, to um, use something called psychometry, where they can pick up images and um, pictures and energy from, you know, objects. But in relation to us, the master teacher was able to, and others, able to travel to this realm and meet these beings who personify, and then they were drawn. And so, um, Anyone who says that's not what the person looks like, you ask them. Well, you produce the likeness of them then. Because what you will find is many races will produce images in their image and likeness and say this is what Jesus looked like. So, for example, the Romans and the Greeks will show you an image of Jesus with blonde hair, blue eyes, which just happens to be what they look like, right? And then... You look at the origins of that, it goes back to Zeus. You look at Zeus, it looks like that with the, with the same hair and everything. So when you then come along and you say, no, Jesus looks like this. Let's say you put a black picture of Jesus. They will say, no, it doesn't look like that. It looks like this. And then you say, no, it looks like this. So then you have the racism and the whole confrontation and division thing going on. So, yeah, those are realistic pictures in our books because they actually, you know, um, from visions and things like that. I thought yours sent me a message while in meditation last night. I got a big zap and gold and green light. Thanks if it was yours. 
Um, people can send energy and, you know, um, to anybody anywhere in the world or the cosmos. Um, how do you want to define a wormhole like some move naturally from gate to gate? Others need to create it to move. Yeah, um, there are natural um, gates that um, open at different times and different places. And there are those that are open by force by tearing the fabric, um, you know, that holds the different realms together. Like you said, like CERN, who have um, carried out experiments with the Hydrogen Collider and um, have open portals. So you have gates, you have portals, and you have, you know, different dimensions that those who know how to can go in between. Oh, wow, is that the time already? Okay. Um... I feel, I think I have found a place that I can meditate. I have really never tried. Yeah, do it. It takes time and takes practice. And um, we do guide you on how to do so on the online course and the book. Um, your bed is a good spot. Oh, yeah, the brother that was saying about the astral projection and he was saying, yeah, when you're on your back, it's easier for you to, to come out. Um, so that's why it's easier when people are lying on their backs. But it can happen regardless whether you're lying on your back or not. How do I stay aware in my dreams? That's a good question from Chipper. Um, the way to do it is leave, leave messages for yourself. Um, for example, um, if you go to a place leave a message there so that the next time you come, um, you remember that you left the message. That's, that's a practice that will help. And um, you, you have to be ready before you go to sleep and get into the dream state. You can actually prepare and say, I don't want to be afraid. I want to be awake. I want to know what I'm saying. I want to be able to be in control. You actually can tell yourself, leave yourself messages because sometimes it's your higher self that um, is, is traveling and then communicating with yourself and downloading to you. You have a counterpart on the, on the higher realms. Um, I'm just trying to go through these quickly. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, that, that Christmas tree and someone else is just... Let me... Kalimon, um, thanks for your... Donation. Should I leave America or stay here and try to prepare and organize my people for what's coming? I've been having a lot of premonitions to leave. Woo! Um, leave. <laughs> leave. That's what I would say. Um, and that's serious. Um, I'm not even really joking. Um, However, we do have the master teacher that guides us and um, will tell you and your ancestors when to leave. Um, and we have a lot of work still to do in the world in certain places. So, But if you're getting those, as you say, premonitions to leave, then leave. That's one of the things that we have to learn to tune into our inner being and knowing what we call intuition and... Um, being able to know, we, we used to know when, it's just like how the animals, when you're in tune with nature, they know when something's going to happen. You see all the birds or animals just moving in a different direction. They, they sense something is coming. And we used to be able to do that when we were more in tune with nature and just awareness. This is where your higher senses come in, your telepathy, intuition, clairvoyance and psychometry. And... Um, you have to learn to listen to your inner voice if it's telling you the right thing to do, all right? So, yeah, um, if you're asking me directly right now based on what we're being taught and what we can see getting ready to happen, as you say, um, I would tell you to leave, all right? But the next question is where you're going to go to. That's going to be safe and not as bad or the same. So, 
Um, we wait for guidance from the master teacher. Rahubat Sakhens Zamal sending a shuk from across the pond. A E O E, yeah, New Jersey. Rahubat Sobet Kufu, yes, good, 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 good brother, man, good brother. Nine, nine, nine. Rahubat and a shuk right back to you, brother. Um, you all are doing a great job, by the way, as well. You know, it, we have to definitely spread rules about worldwide. Um, yeah, some of you guys should come through, come, come through on the channel. <laughs> All right, uh, I think we've got another call. Let's take that and then we'll carry on. Oh, as, as Sobek just mentioned, there are many classes worldwide near your local community. Go there, get involved, get in tune. Um, the experience is phenomenal. Um, greetings caller, Rahuba, as we say. Um, what's your name, where are you calling from, and what's your question? You're right, it's uh, Marcus, I'm from Wolverhampton. Hey Marcus, you finally got through. Go ahead, how you yeah, doing? Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, I'm good, but I'm a bit, I'm a bit nervous. Oh, don't be. Um, it's good, it actually is a good thing. It means you're alive. <laughs> you know ahead. what I mean, it's like a, it's, it's, it's a question, but it's more like a thing where I have to explain to you what I've been through to get to the question. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so basically, I started to research and um, I started to look you up, and I've been been watching you guys since probably about June, May, June. Mm -hmm. From yeah, I've watched a lot of your videos, and it's like this year has been crazy because uh, at the start of the year, um, I was accused of something heinous by a woman, and um, I was absolved of that. Um, you know, case got dropped whatsoever. Yeah. And then straight after that, I got stabbed. Um, I got stabbed in the heart. I died. They brought me back. Um, they took my phone off me, my dog, my car, my, everything. So I was left with nothing, but I was still researching your stuff. Yeah. And um, it's crazy because since I've come back, I feel, I actually feel strong and I feel like I've only just started to live kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I so hear you. Um, it's like, my question is like, with all this madness that I've been going through this year, it's like, what, like, why, what, what's going on? Like, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Like, yeah. like, what's going on? I feel like my, like, my spirit's strong, but I've been training every day since this happened. Like, I don't take a day off training. My dog's trained up, everything. My spiritual awareness is, has always been there since I was a child, but it's higher now, and it's just like, I just feel like I need some clarity. Like, I need to know what's actually going on. Like, mm. what, is it a test? Is it, you know? Yeah, I hear you. And you know what? Many people will be able to resonate with your story because that obviously means that you have a purpose and um, you, you're you here to, you know, fulfill that purpose. So it wasn't your time. And the whole point of losing everything, again, we explained this in the online course and in the book, because... What people don't realize is like sometimes the material things in this world, it's an illusion and you have to be able to let go completely. You know, I used the phrase before, like being in the world, but not of it, to not be attached. You have to detach from the world. And that even goes as far as being fearless in terms of unaliving, right? Meaning that you know for sure that energy cannot be destroyed and so you know that this is a skin suit and we're not even trying to encourage people to do anything silly but when it's not your time it's not your time it's like the master teacher relayed a story about somebody that went to war this is a real story of people he knew that went to war and they were fighting in so many wars and they went through all kinds and survived and they didn't die and they came back home and another person that fell from a high story building and everybody thought they were going to die and he, he didn't die. And then one day they were just like, they just, just fell and died. It's like, so you go through all of that stuff and you're like, you made it. So, and it can be lonely. It can be to teach you a lesson. The master said that sometimes you've been, your ancestors and guides are trying to wake you up trying to guide you, but you're stubborn. Not, I'm not saying you specifically, but you can be stubborn, keep ignoring it, keep ignoring the calling. And this can go on for many years for you to go through all kinds of 
you know, experiences. And he said, sometimes you need to fall out of a plane to wake you up. And then you're like, wow, like it's such a, for different people it's different. For some people, they have to go through so much to then submit and give into their real purpose and what they're really about. And from what you're saying, like you say, it feels like you're just starting. And um, yeah, it's a very inspiring story. Uh, uh, of course, we feel for you for what you've gone through, but trust me, man, most people that have some major role to play, um, they do get put through the test. They do go through a lot. And this is why they say that um, you have to go through trials and tribulations. And, you know, the, the road to heaven, as they would use in a religious context, is narrow. And the road to, to, to hell is wide. You know, the majority of people don't want to really focus and, and realise their real being and who they're really about. And they want to just party, dance, drink, smoke, and just, you know, waste their life. Some people are bound here, so that's all they, they can look forward to. But if you're bound for greater things and a higher life, a higher purpose, then you're going to have to reckon and come to the realisation that, you know what, I got to be real with this, and then Wu Sabat is the is your journey now. You have to start studying, reading, getting disciplined, um, you know, sorting out your diet, and just learning about who you really are, not the fake you, not the synthetic you, but the real being and why you're here, what's your purpose, and that's where your journey is right now. All right, so I hope that's giving you some kind of clarity and help. But connect with us, stay in tune. Um, Another thing I would add, like, people will come across the truth or come across it, they know it's the truth, they will take a long time trying to, you know, trying to find that, that fault, trying to say, nah, this can't be real, it's too good to be true. But this is as real as it gets, and you can miss the boat by being so sceptical that that initial buzz, that energy is going to go, and you just go right back into the world, and it may take you another... 10 years or 20 years or whatever to come back around and then you're like, because there are people that come and say, you know what, I knew about this 10, 15, 20 years ago and I fell off, you know, but now I'm back, you know. So don't, you know, waste your time. Once you know, because people have been trying to find something wrong with the master's words and books from, from the 60s till now. I did a video the other day with a brother that's been coming to our classes for literally 15 to 20 years and he still thinks that I don't know, whatever it is, because people have been abused and been led astray and been lied to for years throughout these religions and people taking advantage of them to the point where trust is, it's, it's like it's very hard for them to trust anything or anyone anymore. And that was by design because when the truth does arrive, some people will just look at us and say, oh, I don't want to deal with religion. And like, they haven't even spoken to us to say, look, we're not religious. We address religion because a lot of people are being stifled by it and we need to help them if they want to come out of it. But, you know, I'm just saying that that's what happens and people become so sceptical that they will miss the boat. There's another, another recording of the master teacher saying people trying to be other than what they are. You can't be nothing but who and what you are. You can try and be a Hindu, try and be a Chinese, try and be, you know, a Caucasian, but everyone is who they are. And be comfortable in your skin and who you are. And you will miss the boat if you're trying to be other than self and kind. If you're trying to, you know, you can put on the costume, you can pretend, but you can't lie to yourself, you see. So come home, bro. Come home. Let's work together. Let's build. Let's do things. We've got another call. Yeah. Yeah, um, that's, you mean freedoctoryork.com, yeah. Um, there are many ways you can help with the legal, with the master teacher, but it has to come from your heart and, um, yeah, so if you go to freedoctoryork.com or in fact go to um, unitedsabiansworldwide.com and there are donate buttons on there. Um, we have many telegram groups and avenues where the legal team work together, so there are different legal fights going on and um, once you know that's why it's in, important to come to classes or to connect with us so we will tell you which legal team 
there is one legal team, but there are different people fighting different aspects of different cases. So we can let you know where to, to donate to help. That's why go to the classes, go to the communities near you, actually speak to people because there's also a lot of hearsay and Chinese whispers and people have heard this or heard that from 10, 20 years ago or like this person said this and like, but we are available, we make ourselves available in every kind of method you can think of so you can um, be connected to the right person or be set straight on what misinformation you may have heard, right? All right, let me keep going. Um, how are we doing? Wow, look at that, 2121, which is 9-9. Nine, nine. Um, nine minutes left. And we have nine minutes left. Wow, that's interesting. Nine ether in effect. All right, let me go from the bottom upwards. Jay, you're so lucky. As soon as I said that, you posted the question right at the bottom. I really struggle to see the work of Malachi York uh, as mastery aside from esoteric theories and is there anybody of work which best represents him through pure craft? Um, that, yeah, that, the thing with that is that when you're looking from the outside in, you're not going to know what's going on on the inside because there are different orders within the you know, United Sabians worldwide. There are like the ancient Egyptian order, the OES, the um, um, you know the brotherhood, the sisterhood. The, there are different orders that get information that is not publicly available. And you know some of those schools, like the um, the ancient Egyptian order, or in the past Sons of the Green Light, or um, ancient mystical order of Melchizedek, there are orders where you get information and groomed and trained on those higher things that you're talking about and you're not going to get them from outside so you have to come close, come in. We cannot, as they say in the Bible, um, throw pearls to swine and I'm not calling you that by any means, I'm just saying that the point is you have to come in and come close, get to know Pahana Bab Yanun, all right? Um, when you say don't get too attached and um, purpose, how do you balance that with family life or sometimes you have to serve in order to lead? Yeah, so um, it's not that you're not going to care about your family or your friends. It's that you will have to start to discern who you're around, who is helping you or hindering you. And you have to know how to, even though you're around them, you're not attached or you're not um, allowing them to pull you in a different direction. So it's like balance and being able to balance is not easy with different members, different family, different, you know, you have to maybe, some people still have to, you know, go into places that they have to deal with people. So it's not saying that you don't deal with people or circumstances, but you have to just learn how to do it and Wu Sabat helps you to do that, yeah? So um, it's, it's something you learn and you get better at doing and you know when to have your time to yourself. Um, yeah, and you have to serve sometimes, like you have to be humble in certain situations. So it's about navigating and how to deal with, you know, the circumstances you're in. I don't want to say I know exactly, but Jack, to me, that is one of the first realms of how we create things. Exactly, but Jack, to me, I don't get that. Uh, yeah, you create, I, I don't want to say I know exactly, but Jack, to me, that is one of the first realms of how we create things. I don't get that question, but um, if you want to clarify. Okay, we're going to be ending shortly. We have like five minutes. Um, um, so if you haven't got your question in, either join our Telegram group and ask it in there. And um, yeah, I'm trying to catch up. We're behind. All right. Chris King. Yes, I agree with you. 
Um, I'm living in Canada, so I should send my donation there. Do it through the website because it, it will go to the right place. The official website is unitedstabiansworldwide.com, but you have satellites from different communities and obviously different stores and so and different projects that are going on. So when you come close, you know, and they're also be careful because there are people out there that are rep trying to say they're representing Wusabat or the master teacher, because as you know, many people like to take an opportunity um, for, for their own selfishness. So that's why we say be around and be close to people who are close to people who are close, so you not be taken advantage of, all right? How to speak with them. Yeah, free Rashad Jamal, free Dr. York, free anyone who's been held, um, you know, wrongfully. And like the button, push the like on the channel. What is the true meaning behind the story of Egyptian gods and goddesses? There are so many and um, different stories because there were people, they were just very intelligent and elevated because a lot of them were pharaohs and um, they were taught by these extraterrestrials and so depending on which, which person we're talking about not all of them some of them were also disagreeable or had conflicts we have a book called conflict of the gods that go into that or ancient egypt and the pharaohs um, that goes into a lot of what you're asking Okay, we're coming to the last three minutes, so remember the course online. It's, the link is on there, um, academy.disruptive solutions for success and disruptive solutions for success. So we're disrupting, you know, what you've been taught, wrong information. We're disrupting it and giving you the right knowledge, the right wisdom and the right understanding for your success and our success, because if I'm successful and you're successful, together we are all successful. Okay, um, okay, families, look like uh, we have to wrap it up. Um, you know, without you, we wouldn't be doing this because we are serving you. We are answering your question and your questions help us to, to learn and to teach and each one teach one. And you should also aspire to be helping and doing and teaching as well, because we need as many teachers as we can. Um, you know, we need to be builders. Okay, North America. Yeah, it, it goes so quickly, and it's always a, an, an honor and a pleasure to be able to come and share Wood Sabat by way of the master teacher. Um, Parnabad Yanun, um, Tana Direl, thank you so much for your donation. And, um, you know, every little helps. Um, and bring out that, that divine being in you. Find your purpose, find your kind of like, what are you here to do? We're all here collectively to spread Wusabat, to teach the doctrine, to bring the master teacher home, to rebuild. But you have your personal purpose as well. Thanks, Miss Chief. I don't know how to pronounce your name. Miss Chief NZ. Um, yeah, thank you so much for that comment, kind words. Um, yeah, it'd be great. We're gonna we're gonna all meet up. Let's have a big meet up one time. We're gonna do something where everyone, if you're able to come, come so we can actually exchange that energy in, in person, you know. Um, I'm in a Sudan. I want to donate, but don't want to leave to transfer funds. When will you have this forum again? You will answer, you answered my qu questions without asking. All right, um, we, we're here every week. These are every week. Spread the word every Tuesday. I think this is episode six. Yeah, so, yeah, we, we've got six already that you can go and catch up on. But we're here every, um, every Tuesday, same time, same place. And I'm teaching this Saturday as well. Um, we do live cl um, classes every Saturday. You can join via Zoom 
Clubhouse and we are also going to have them recorded for the channel here as well. So, yeah, if you can tune in, um, tune in. I'm going to have to love you all and leave you, but thank you so much for all the people that ask questions. For those who didn't get their questions answered, um, it wasn't personal. Sometimes it just scrolls too fast and I don't catch it. Join the Telegram group, ask it there. We will answer it or come back again next week and ask. Um, yeah, much a shook, a shook, a shook. That's what we say, divine love in our language. And until next week, Wadu Muesar. Bye, family. <laughs>